here's the broadcast. Yeah. Now you get to reunite here with your teammates, including a guy that just came off the World Series. What's the feeling to get back with these guys that made that magical run? Well, I mean, for me, it's always a joy to come back, especially not I'm not working. So it's, <laughs> it's even more fun. Yeah. Um, Certainly, it's, this weekend's mostly about the, the 95 and 05 teams, at which I wasn't a part, but uh, I think we all feel part of the program in, in some regard. So, fun celebration for them, but you know, just for me as a player to come back and see some of my buddies and uh, catch a football game, which uh, is nice to see in person. My kids, I've unfortunately indoctrinated them into the, into the whole deal, so they're going to get to see it live, and uh, we're just really going to enjoy the weekend and try to slow down and uh, enjoy some old friendships as well. Your team's run sort of right in the middle of those two, mm-hmm. 95 and 05, sort of bridge that that gap between mm-hmm. the two. What was the program like having that 95 World Series on the resume and then watching it build towards that 05 team? You know, it's interesting when you look at the, the 10 year span there from really if you, if you go a little bit longer, maybe 12 years from kind of when Todd showed up on campus in, in 93, um, the ebbs and flows of the program from there, and, and you think about three really, really good teams, but some, some, some downturns as well. And uh, you know, I was here at the bottom of the downturn, uh, and our group kind of got it going back up. So we missed the tournament in '99 and 2000. You know, didn't even participate in the Southeastern Conference tournament. Uh, in 2001, that group really molded together, and uh, we had a phenomenal season, and maybe just an arm short of, of winning the whole thing. Uh, and then again, a, a bit of a downturn, and then back up in 05. So uh, fascinating, really, now kind of as an analyst to go back and watch the ebbs and flows of the program under Coach D. But it seemed like him and Slim always knew how to pinpoint a class uh, to get them back going in the right direction, and they would allow those guys to develop. Um, and it culminated with some great seasons. Um, so I know us in 01, we really took a lot of pride in trying to get us back because of the downturn it had taken from the pinnacle of 94, 95, 96, when you could make a case that Tennessee was as successful as any baseball program in the league, other than maybe LSU, for that period of time. So uh, just feel blessed to have been a part of a team that put its stamp on this program, for sure. What is it like to view this team as an analyst? And when you go from playing for it and, you know, wearing the uniform and everything like that to having to, you know, watch these games from a totally different perspective, what's that like? <clears throat> well, you know, I think... Um, some people, you know, you get some of the Twitter feedback, they would think that you're biased. But I think right. in, in any, it, it, really in some regard, I would be more critical of my own, you know, press right. where I play just because yeah. how much you love it, how much you want to want them to see do well. I, I think the biggest obstacle for Dave and his staff is the uh, emergence of Vanderbilt. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, yeah. you talk about arguably the best program in America is now in your state. Mm-hmm. Um, certainly... Um, if you trace back the best teams in the history of this program, there's a lot of Nashville mid-state kids on those right. teams. Mm-hmm. And uh, now Vanderbilt is going to get their share of those kids. So uh, it's just a, it's a different dynamic. Mm-hmm. Um, Florida is not going anywhere. South Carolina had one of the best runs in college baseball history. Right. Um, and, and you got Georgia, Kentucky, and Missouri that are all very competitive every year. So it is, you know, I, People from the West might argue, but I would say the East is the most competitive division in all of the country. Mm. And so as an analyst, to come back and watch uh, the team, you yeah. realize how much better you can be, mm. and it doesn't always show up in the record. Right, yeah. Uh, and I think we're seeing that in football as well. I mean, there's no mm. doubt how much better we are, yeah. yet we're sitting there at 4-4, four four, hopefully finish 8-4. and four. But uh, So, you know, you can see the progress. I know it's frustrating to see the wins and losses not accumulate the way everybody wants to, but... The depth of the league is such that um, it makes it very, very difficult. Also, the roster turnover, a little staff turnover during the offseason. Where do you see about where they kind of stand right now? <clears throat> well, it's, it's, I think it's difficult. I think Vanderbilt and Florida, are, when the polls will come out, they'll be one and two, one yeah. and three. Um, Strickland at George is now in his third year. You got to believe that the depth is now built up. You got to believe they're going to be ready to make a run. Missouri returns two out of their three starters uh, from their weekend rotation on a team that arguably probably should have got in the tournament. Right. Exactly. Um, and Kentucky returns their entire uh, rotation. So it's an East division that really hasn't gone anywhere. Um, 
So for Tennessee, the question is, is how impactful can these newcomers be? How much can Nick Zenzel carry the club? How much can Andy Cox be the, the senior leader that everybody knows he will be? Can, if he can stay healthy, I expect him to be an all-conference type of pitcher. Mm -hmm. uh, can Serrano perform the way everybody believes he's capable of? You know, those are some of the question marks. And if so, I think they're going to be right in the mix, probably in the middle of the East. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so I, that's where I would look at as an analyst going into the year. What the, what's it like to have a you know somebody from the UT family get a World Series yeah. ring? I'm just so proud of him. You know mm -hmm. the, the way he stuck stuck with it out there in Kansas City, and I know the type of guy he is, and the type of teammate he is, and how hard he works. Mm -hmm. uh, so to see that rewarded with the championship, really really cool. Um, mm -hmm. And to see the way he performed, mm -hmm. um, I hope I hope the Tennessee family really embraces that because you just you never know when another guy's going to get a ring. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm just really proud of him. I'm going to go back to the analyst thing real quick. What's the life been like? I mean, just the fact that, uh, you know, obviously the SEC network provides a lot more opportunities to be a, you know, to really focus on something like mm -hmm. this and to have a job where you can really care about SEC baseball. Yeah. How cool is that? I, really cool. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, when I first got into it, I was unaware that the network was in the works. Mm -hmm. And so you weren't quite sure how much availability, how much work there was to be had. Right. And yeah. now all of a sudden, you know, it's, it's seasonal. You to do it every week, yeah. Yeah, there's plenty of work. So. Uh, as a baseball nerd, as a, as a college baseball uh, mm. guy, you know, fortunate to play in the big leagues and, and play, a, you know, a long professional career. But I'm a college baseball guy. To be able to cover it for a living is is a joy. Um, mm. And uh, just to see, you know, for me to go into different programs mm. and and see how they work and see what's different about them and right. the way different coaches handle their clubs and their rosters. Mm -hmm. I think probably one of the most fascinating things about our sport is the scholarship situation. Right, definitely. That's how unique it is. Mm -hmm. uh, so to see how different coaches handle that with their states and with their scholarship limitations, mm -hmm. uh, it's a it's a ball. I really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. and, and then also to see the different atmospheres. Right. Uh, college baseball atmospheres, which are mm -hmm. just spectacular in our conference. Exactly, where so you really have fun, the crowds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You think about coaching at all? It's like it, when you're around it this much, do you think about going in that I do. direction? Yeah, I do. I do. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll see how the future unfolds as far as that's concerned.